to our continuing series of virtual voices. Uh, thank you for your letters and your comments. Uh, we are very pleased to read them and reply to you whenever appropriate. Uh, today, we have a very interesting session. It is um, our former UN interns from our UN internship program. We have uh, Nusret Lasker, uh, who was our intern in 2014. We have Janice Park, who was our intern in 2017. And we have Sihi O, who was our intern just as the pandemic started. Uh, so, and of course, our moderator is Apov Kabir Gupta, who was our intern also in 2014, who currently is uh, the secretary of the board of World Information Transfer. Over to you, Apov. Thank you so much, Dr. Durbach, and welcome to everyone joining us for another series of World Information Transfer's Virtual Voices series. Uh, please continue to send your letters and your comments to myself and Dr. Durbach. It's an absolute delight to read them. Um, as Dr. Durbach mentioned, today is Youth Takeover on Virtual Voices series as we welcome our former interns um, at the UN. Nusrat Lashkar, she is currently a consulting analyst at Accenture UK based out of London and has recently completed a master's degree in management with a specialization in strategy and international business. From the London Business, uh, from the London School of uh, Economics, we have Sihi, who was our intern as soon as the pandemic started. So definitely looking forward to hearing your experiences, Sihi. Uh, she holds a master's degree in ecological education from Iwa Women's University and a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy from Korea University. Um, she has experience in journalism, teaching, and research. And we're also joined by Janice Park, who is our intern in 2017. Um, an extremely important year for the United Nations as uh, we adopted the Sustainable Developmental Goals just a year before. And she is a fourth year senior at Brown University studying international and public affairs in the security track with an interest in non-proliferation and weapons of mass destruction. So Janice, Nusrat, Sihi, a warm welcome to you in Virtual Voices and thank you for everyone joining. So let's kick it off with Nusrat. Nusrat, do you want to share with us your experience of when you were an intern at World Information Transfer? Uh, what was that year like and what do you remember uh, from 2014? Uh, well, first of all, Dr. Durbach, thank you so much for having me on this platform. And thank you, Apoor, for giving me such a wonderful introduction. 2014, as I was just speaking uh, a bit earlier, it seems like it was not that long ago, but still it seems like it was very long ago because a lot has changed in my life since then. And I personally think that um, my experience at the World Information Transfer has played a key role in terms of the pace at which things have changed in my career. Uh, 2014 was definitely, 2014 summer was definitely a very interesting summer for me personally, because it was my first proper internship which I'm very grateful for to Dr. Derbach and the rest of the team that how many people get to be at the UN for their first internship. So that was one thing. Uh, secondly, I used to be a very professionally shy person, uh, not very confident with my communication and everything back then, but that internship really changed me. It, it, it helped me realize my confidence I wouldn't say that I was not confident. It was just that I was not aware of it. I was not aware of a lot of my professional strengths. And it was this particular internship that helped me recognize it. Um, during that time, I remember a lot of things were happening at the UN. Uh, there was the Syrian crisis going on. So the hot discussion at the Security Council was all about the Syrian crisis. And I was at that time a second year student at international, uh, studying international relations at the University of Edinburgh. So for me, it was a very exciting time to be in the UN because what I'm studying in the classroom, in my course material, that this is happening in Syria and I'm actually getting to witness it happen live, the discussions at the Security Council. Yeah. Also at that time, 
the hottest topic was SDG 2020. And now we are here in 2020. So it's really amazing how my, um, the first time I came across the sustainable development goals was in 2014, where they were talking about SDG 2020. And I attended all those meetings there, thoroughly enjoyed it. And fast forward now, we are in 2020. Um, another area that really interested me and um, was the issues on women empowerment, uh, which you went, uh, where I got to attend a lot of meetings on that as an intern back then. So that also sort of stuck with me throughout since then. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the skills that I learned, I must say I, I was able to further strengthen my uh, communication skills, specifically writing, because as an intern there, one of my key day-to-day -day tasks, other than just attending meetings and all, was not just passively attending those meetings, but actually understanding what they're talking about and condensing a two hour long meeting into a snapshot that, that could be read in a minute and a half or two without losing the meaning, without losing the gist of what was spoken at the meeting. So that was a challenge. And I hope I did well back then, uh, but it was a challenge that really pushed me outside my comfort zone and helped me grow. That's excellent. And, and uh, yeah, Nusrat, I remember everyone, uh joining Nusrat and I were together doing the internship at the United Nations in 2014. And, you know, as Nusrat mentioned, it was a very hot year. The Millennium Developmental Goals were due to expire in one year. So the process of the SDG creation had begun. And that's something that really dominated um, the developmental agenda, while the security angle was also threatened with the Syrian crisis at its peak. Um, let me switch over to Janice. Janice, you did your internship in 2017. And from memory, I recall that was a very volatile year as well. Um, you know, you had the Rohingya crisis that was at its peak. Uh, Britain had just triggered Article 50 to leave the European Union. And it was Trump's first summer uh, as president championing America first. So why don't you give us a flavor of what your internship was like and, and you know, what was the tone and the temperature at the United Nations? Sure. So my experience at the United Nations was really exciting. Um, I think I started my internship during some of my most formative years. Obviously, I'm, I'm quite young, so I'm still forming. But um, my experience there was really critical to my professional development and my formation, just as Nusra mentioned. Um, while I was there, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was only 17 um, when I was at the United Nations and I was taking notes at um, incredible, incredible meetings. I remember some of the, my most vivid memories is watching the Syrian crisis meetings um, going on. And even still after 2014, it was continuing on to 2017. And that was around the time when uh, humanitarian aid efforts were being blockaded and it was impossible to get any sorts of resources into the region. Um, and I think that although there were so many things happening in terms of domestic politics affecting um, the United Nations and the way that America was changing its diplomatic relations with the international community as a result of the change in leadership, um, I found that there was quite a bit more hope and stability than um, I previously had thought there would be. I think that when people think of the United Nations, sometimes there it can be met with a lot of cynicism um, and a, a misconception of a lack of action. Uh, but what my experience was that there was attention being paid to issues that I had no idea was ever considered on an international yeah. scale. For example, Women's Entrepreneurship Day um, and uh, Women's International Women's Day, um, that event was huge. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it was also the year when the women's um, empowerment principles were signed um, at the United Nations. So mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah, that, that year was absolutely incredible. 
yeah, yeah. And Sihi, you're yes. one of the youngest interns and, uh, you know, you, you've just started your internship as the entire globe has been watching a virus unfold and, and sort of <laughs> spread its carnage across uh, society and economy and uh, geopolitical events. How's it like being an intern in 2020? <laughs> Yeah, I started my internship in February this year, so it was not really uh, serious in the U.S. at the time. It was serious in Korea, but when I go to the when I went to the U.S., it was not that much serious. So I hope that yeah. it's not getting serious in the U.S. So I hope that, but it was not. But actually, <laughs> but yeah, so I excited to go to New York to have an internship. So at the beginning, it was really cool. I can attend every meetings every day and they're all crowded at the first time. And I can see lots of people from another countries. So I met lots of, I met lots of people, but after one month, I think, the, the like, pandemic began getting yeah, real. Yeah, Asian has been closed. Every meeting has been canceled and I really look forward to attending the meeting was the uh, the Commission on the State Test of Women, CSW. It was really big events, supposed to be really big events. So there are lots of like uh, almost 100 side events was planned, planned it, but they were all canceled. And so it was really sad for me, but still they had me one meeting at the United Nations. So I attend the meeting and I met lots of people. We sang together and it was really awesome to be there. Yeah. But yeah, no, that was my that last definite, meeting I attended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and are you still um, sort of keeping in touch with all of the meetings taking place at the UN through uh, the UN Web TV? Yeah, of course, I got yeah. the email and checked the every TVs and uh, thanks to Durba, Dr. Durba, I attended lots of meetings beside the uh, here meetings and like yeah. crosses, something like that. And maybe that's I'm a little incredible. No, that's yeah. incredible because, you know, everything's gone virtual. And one of the best things that the UN has been able to do, and we even had a speaker um, Mr. Igor, who spoke about, you know, how conference management at the United Nations has completely gone virtual. And they have been one of the most successful organizations in the world to completely transform, um, you know, into a digital meeting um, mm. organization overnight. Um, I think we lost Nusrat. Um, so, oh. not sure. we I think we lost Nusrat. I'm oh. here. I'm here. Oh, there she is. There we go. Got it. Uh, brilliant. Guys, I want to touch upon, you know, and I know everyone will have a little bit of a different experience, but from experience, we know that, you know, Dr. Durbach structures these internships to be very, very hands-on, get-go from day one, right? We, we come to New York on a Sunday and we enter the United Nations on a Monday and we attend meetings, you know, throughout the day and we're expected to understand them, write about them and analyze what it is that we're seeing and hearing by Tuesday, right? So how did everyone find the pace of the internship? Because I do know that it's not, it's not up to everyone's standard and pace to keep up with an internship like that for months on end. <laughs> Well, actually, it's 10 to 12 weeks. It wasn't months. But yes, it has to be intensive for all of the, my interns to get what I think that they should get. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. So anyone has any perspective? Uh, Janice, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to commend Dr. Durbach because I've done a lot of internships since then, just trying to find the best experience for my career. And I have a taste of how difficult it is to structure an internship that is helpful to the youth. And it is really commendable that you put all of this time and resources in um, creating a program that's so uh, 
valuable. Um, and in my experience as a 17 year old, uh, that was some of the quickest professional development I've ever had. And it brought me up to a standard that I never thought I was capable of or that had ever been asked of me. And it completely changed the way that I conduct myself professionally, academically, and even personally. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful to hear. <laughs> Ms. Rett? Well, I would like to add uh, in terms of what happened to me after learning those skills uh, at World Information Transfer. For me, when I put down the skills that I learned on my CV, that really helped me sort of, you know, launch other internships and jobs. Because as I mentioned before, this was my first ever internship. So I learned the basics that was needed. And it really helped me gain the confidence in performing well in my future internships and jobs, especially when it came to documenting, writing, gathering information, preparing reports and all of that. So it was, and I think it is like one of the core skills that anyone requires in any kind of career they wish to pursue later on in their future. Whether you go into consulting, whether you go into banking, or even if you decide to go into an international organization, you will be expected to write reports and briefs at some point. It may not necessarily be the exact same thing that you did at World Information Transfer, but those core skills, they are very much transferable and very useful. Mm -hmm. um, Apar, you have a question. Did you read yeah. the question? Yep, yeah. the questions are coming in right away. So guys, a bunch of students have joined this webinar and um, you know, looking back at your internship experience, the first question we have, what advice can you give to students who also want to become an intern at WIT? You know, what should they be paying special attention to right now so that they can be, um, you know, in your guys' positions when you were in 2014, 17, and 2020? But that was addressed specifically to Janice. That's from uh, one of my students uh, um, in the so that's, Ukraine this question, University. <laughs> this question comes from Ola. Um, I'll get to the one specific for Janice by uh, Lysia, uh, who also asked Janice, very specific thing, but she says, what are the three things that appeal to you at World Information Transfer? So first let's kick it off with uh, Janice, perhaps you. Uh, Specifically, you know, looking back at your internship, what advice would you have for current students who also want to join World Information Transfer as an intern? So um, I was completely unprepared for my internship at World Information Transfer. Um, I want to be really, I cannot emphasize enough how grateful I am for the chance that WIT took on me, even though I was really, I had nothing to offer uh, WIT except for my pure, untapped, un refined um, self. And one thing I'd say in order to be able to get the most out of your internship, I really advise you to get familiar with the language of the UN, um, all of the different acronyms that they're going to throw at you, all of the different systems, be familiar with it, understand the system in a way that helps you um, take advantage of the information that you're going to have access to because you will never have access to the, the, this kind of information again unless you end up spending your career here. So really, really familiarize yourself with, with current events and the UN system. Yeah, and that could be reading more news articles and making sure you're up to date with current affairs um, and going on to the United Nations website and reading the meetings that are that are critical to the organization. Absolutely. Excellent, that's great advice. Um, Sihi, any advice for current students um, who are wanting to be an intern, given that you are the latest intern at World Information Transfer? Advice, um, uh, no, for me, it was really challenging uh, to use English because I'm not a native. So mm -hmm. it was really big challenge for me to uh, 
do something Dr. Durba asked me. So first time I recorded every meetings, like it was for two or two to three hours, but I didn't really quite understand everything. So I can't really summarize the good mm. summary. So I record everything and I repeat, repeat the listening to them at night. So sometimes I stay up till 4 a.m. something like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so it's, it's basically hard work, right? That is required. Yeah, Be prepared like, to work hard, work long to get it right. Yeah, it's just <laughs> for understanding. See, he is extremely, uh, well, like a workaholic, like I am. And, <laughs> and I really appreciated that very much, even though actually I never met Sihi in person, which was terrible because we just, because of COVID, I was not traveling and to New York and at that time. And I had too much work to do. So Sihi and I sort of were doing everything virtually, <laughs> which was very interesting. Now we're continuing the same process. <laughs> That's incredible. So to everyone listening in, you need to have a can-do attitude. Um, be prepared to really work hard during, as an intern at World Information Transfer. And to Janice's point, make sure that you, know, you stay on top of current affairs, read the news, make sure what are the key issues important to the United Nations. Um, I have another question from uh, Yel Zitzva. Um, and I think Nusra, this would be specific to you. Um, Yel Zitzva asked that, which moment was the one you know, during your internship when you realized you became more confident and you were able to match to the level of your surroundings and to other interns? Was there any point? Um, I would say I, I became comfortable with my role in the first, I would say, three weeks or so. Uh, but then I needed some sort of, like, I, I needed, I remember we were working um, on the publication. Um, the, yeah, World the, Ecology Report. Yes, the ecolo ecology report. And uh, Dr. Derbach had asked us, each one of us, to come up with a topic that is interesting, pitch the idea, and if it is approved, then you go ahead you know, and you write about it. And I had uh, written an article on the environmental links to breast cancer. Um, I remember I was very, because for me, that was like, to me, it was like the ultimate examination for me of whether I have learned the things, have I actually learned the things that I claim to have learned during my internship? Yeah. Um, so I wrote the report and I read it so many times because um, I know Dr. Jobak is very particular, okay? You cannot have any, any error, nothing. She has a very good eye for that. detail. <laughs> yes, she has a very good eye for detail and I want to become like her. So I was, I made sure that it's, perfectly written and so for me the moment was when she approved my article and she actually said that she couldn't find a mistake on it and I was like okay it means like I have achieved something in this internship and it was really a moment of celebration for me at that internship I was so happy that day <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible Dr. Dovak did you know about this did you know about this being a turning point in Nazareth's life no I didn't so it's very nice to hear that Actually, it's nice to hear from all of them how it benefited them, because I know that I'm not an easy taskmaster, but yeah. I also know that I know what I want. <laughs> and, you know, somebody that doesn't meet my level, I get rid of them. That's it. No problem for me with that either. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, Janice, I'm going to come back to you. I have a question from Lisa who asks, what three things appeal to you at World Information Transfer? I think it's the flexibility. Even though that there's a very specific mission of World Information Transfer, they really, you know, cater to the interns and allow them to do the meetings that they want to do, um, as long as it ties back to the mission statement, um, as long as we're doing it with a purpose. 
um, the flexibility, the room for growth, the room for mentorship and connection, especially webinars like this, where you can network with all different kinds of people in the field. Um, and I think the room for self um, motivated and, and um, like, just like see he like knowing how to take that initiative. Um, no one's going to ask you and chase you around for for deadlines and tasks. Uh, you have to show what kind of worker you are, and it's up to you to prove your worth. Yeah, no, I, I, th th those are excellent three points, Janice, and and right on the mark because you know the internship is structured with a clear focus on health and environment, but given that we are at the UN, you know, we do have that flexibility to focus on the issues that are most material to us, right? I remember as my time as an intern, I used to just be drawn to all meetings concerning the finance of development. And I used to write about that and even about things that were material to India at that point. And Dr. Durback and, you know, Dr. Strauss always encouraged um, us to write about the things and to attend the meetings that were very important to us. And interestingly, in the entire internship group, everyone by the end of it would become known for something, right? Like you would know who your go-to person is for a specific topic and a theme. And I think that that is what adds richness to the internship. And that's what gives the World Ecology Report a lot of richness as well, where you have a lot of diversity of uh, opinions. I have another question around um, confidence, um, you know, Nusrat, and it comes from um, one of uh, Dr. Durbeck's students called Yana. And, you know, she asks, what are the three things that can make you more confident as a student? You know, I, I, you know, I can say that the World Information Transfer Internship is a very high level internship. It's at the United Nations. It's, you know, it can come across as being an extremely difficult, I mean, it is a very difficult internship to land on your CV. Um, it's very high stakes. You know, you mentioned Nusra that you were someone who didn't really realize that you had all of these talents until you had an opportunity to test them. How can people have more confidence in, you know, applying to this internship and saying that, yes, this is the right experience for them? Um, in terms of confidence building, right, or like recognizing, rec recognizing your confidence, whether it is pre-internship or on the internship, one very important thing that I have learned is you surround yourself with the kind of people you would like to be like. So if you think that, okay, I am lacking in something, but I want to improve on that, then you become friends with those kind of people or you start working with those kind of people because you, you, are, you, you tend to learn by influence of others. So, you know, as they say, it's very important to choose, pick and choose your company. Um, so this is one thing I did. I surrounded myself with those kind of people I looked up to or I aspired to be. Um, second thing, second point is ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask questions to your peers, ask questions to your seniors, whoever it is there. If something, some topic ignites your curiosity, don't be shy to ask questions. I used to be the kind of person I used to think like, oh no, it is a silly question. They will think I'm, I'm dumb. Maybe I should not ask that question, but don't be afraid to ask questions. And um, third thing would be to work with integrity. So whatever you're doing, uh, you're studying, do it with integrity, have have the belief that what you are doing, that, okay, I'm putting 100% of my effort in it, then I will get the results. Um, and the same thing goes with your work ethic as well. You're working in an internship or you're doing a part-time job, have the belief that it will work out fine because I'm putting my 100% in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, those, are, those are very good, yeah. I have a question from 
Anastasia and, and, you know, three of you feel free to answer or if anyone specifically can recall an instance. Um, Anastasia asks, what was the most difficult for you during the internship? Trying to remember even my time as an intern and what exactly was hardest. Anyone, any, any thoughts come to mind? Um, I think for me, uh, you know, it was my first internship as well. And I think it was um, just managing my time, right? And managing my time in the most effective manner possible because we were in meetings throughout the day and then we had work and we were living in New York, which is an extremely hectic city as it is. Um, so I definitely learned some very important life skills in managing how I work, managing myself, and just making sure that I value my own time. You know, I didn't have time to play, uh, watch series and movies before sleeping like I used to do in college sometimes. I didn't have time to, you know, play video games on my phone um, like I was used to at that age. Uh, so these are things that, you know, like, somehow you grow through these kind of things. And, and I think time management was something which became very important. But that is important throughout life, the yeah. life management. And I try to instill that in all of my interns, that they literally have to learn how to manage their time effectively and positively and be creative in the process. Yeah. You know. And they, you have to learn that when you're young. When you yes. to, you're 23, 24, forget it. It's not easy to learn that. It's very easy when you're young to learn that. I completely agree. And I think it's yeah. something that has stuck with me till date. I mean, anyone can pick me up and put me in any country in any kind of job. And I will at least have the confidence that I will be able to manage 24 hours that are given to me every day in the most effective and productive way possible. And that is something that I learned through the World Information Transfer Internship at a very early age that it becomes a form of habit now. Yeah, it becomes part of you or who you are. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a question coming in from um, Ksenia. 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 Yes, Sen. and Sihi, this is for you. Uh, yes. They ask, I would like to ask Sihi, uh, you know, they can read on your wit profile that you mastered in ecology and psychology. Have you been able to mix these two things in your internship? Is it possible where you are attending meetings with both ecology and philosophy? No, personally, I think it's, of course it's possible, but I don't think I really mix them together because I was really focused on the ecological education. So I wrote the uh, World War Ecology Report about uh, educating students to understand epidemics and uh, what mm. is that? the biodiversity and human health. It was about the uh, how biodiversity loss affects disease. So <laughs> I think it was not really quite mixed. I could mix it together, but I think philosophy could be everywhere. So when I write something, I, I think I maybe blended what I'm thinking and what I've been thinking about uh, some thoughts or philosophies. I think hopefully I could blend it my thoughts in my writing. Uh, mm. and I just want to mention that uh, unfortunately because of COVID, uh, see he missed out on the, the, the three of you had. We have the speaker series and yeah. uh, invite uh, and I invited the top people that I could get to come and talk to the interns and they all had to ask relevant questions. And that uh, 
ma makes them aware not only of uh, how to ask questions, but it also makes them aware that the psychology of how it is to answer a question, uh, how to respond to a question, and how to feel confident about asking themselves. See, yeah. I unfortunately missed that because I have not had any speaker series except for one, and that was just before CE started. That was in January. So it was unfortunate, but uh, well, she's making up for it now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And for the audiences, you know, as Dr. Durback mentioned, an important component of the internship is us sitting one-to-one -one with these experts who are UN professionals, experts in their field from academia, from politics, from business. And the internship group with ambassadors as well, the internship group sits with them for one hour, uninterrupted, uh, you know, kind of like virtual voices, but physical voices. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, we interact with them. These are some very senior people and we are the youngest in the organization. And, you know, that, that interaction itself is extremely beneficial and, and very informative. Um, yeah, and you that's have a, to ask questions. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We would do a round robin. Everyone, mm -hmm. everyone got a chance to ask a question. Ask a question yes. And the speaker can't leave until everyone's asked a question as well. <laughs> um, I have a really good question from Martha that's come in. And uh, they're asking you, you know, what helped you cope with the large amount of information and meetings um, that we were all part of? Um, you know, as see, he mentioned, some of them are three, four hours long sometimes on topics that you know you're not innately interested in as well what helped you retain everything in your mind and use that in a way to advance your internship janice should i kick it off from you sure so um some of the meetings that i attended weren't um always uh specific to my interests but i still had to treat it with the same integrity and care that I would treat to something that I was like, that was one of my passion projects. And so something that I always did was uh, try to understand the significance before I did anything. So um, figuring out which groups of people this impacted the most, what issues this could uh, extend to, who, who could this help and who could this hurt. Um, mm -hmm. And one of my most important and uh, most uh, valuable in uh, meetings was actually the remembrance of Holodomor. And before I attended the event, I had no idea what Holodomor was. And um, as a result of that meeting, because I became compassionate for a group of people that I had never really understood the gravity of the situation, I was able to learn the value of an event that I might not have been able to understand if I hadn't had an open mind. So that really helps when you are processing large amounts of information because your mind becomes keyed into something that's more interesting and more useful and you feel like you're contributing something. Yeah. Very important points. Nusrat? Um, I wanted to add that when I attended those meetings at the UN, I treated them with the same level of seriousness at, as I would um, when attending a lecture at university, which means that I need to know the subject content and understand it properly. And one of the uh, things that really helped me was for the, those meetings that were particularly very long, and um, in areas that I was not very much knowledgeable about, uh, it really helped for me to sort of go over the agenda of the meeting beforehand, because, you know, just like how in college, uh, before attending a lecture, you are provided with a reading list, you are provided with your uh, PowerPoint slides, so you go over it, so you know what your lecture is talking about. Right. So I followed the same approach when attending the UN meetings, meetings that I did not understand about. I went over the agenda, usually before the start of the meeting, if you get there soon, they give you those pamphlets, which has uh, handouts, which has the key points that, that they are going to be covering in the meeting. So it sort of gave me a higher level idea of what they are going to be talking about. And then it helped me structure my notes and I focused on 
picking out the relevant information throughout the meeting and focusing on my note, note making around that. And then obviously I used to tend to override a lot of information. So I had to go over them and then filter it out again. But I would suggest that go over the agenda of the meeting. It really helps knowing where mm -hmm. to focus your, um, it, it helps you sort of focus your senses towards picking out the information that you need to know. Yeah. I, And Sihi, what about you? You know, you're attending a lot of virtual meetings now. Um, do you feel you can sort of cope with the information load um, that that it comes with? Uh, I was I was thinking about uh, in actual meeting because uh, yeah. like news news said that I always check the schedule first, and when you see the schedule, there was some. Uh, summarize of the meeting. So I checked that before so you could understand more about it. So it makes you help to mm -hmm. understand the meetings. And I usually talk with my uh, another interns who attended the meeting at the same time. So it was really helpful. Oh, how you think about this? Uh, what, they, what they actually said about this. And it was really helpful to understand things. Yeah. What I understand and what they understand, it was just total, sometimes it's totally different. <laughs> it was also helpful to understand different point of views and something like that. And, yeah. And for the virtual meetings, uh, they have always YouTube, so I always. Not you have the option of going back and hearing what yeah. they said again. <laughs> oh, what, did I, what did they say again? Again, like that. Yeah. sometimes they do that. I just want to no, say just keep doing it. You will get improved one day. It's just don't give up. Yeah. I think just from my perspective as well, I remember 2014 was the year, like, you know, many of my core beliefs were beginning to get formed on multiple issues. So whenever I used to be in UN meetings, I used to draw a line in my notebook and write the comments and write the things that I used to like in the meetings that I agree with, that everyone is saying, and the things that I didn't agree with, just to understand both sides of the argument. You have to remember the UN is a place where everybody is coming together many a times with their own national interests in mind. So you have to have a very critical ear and a critical eye in understanding you know, where you're sitting. Um, I remember one of the Syrian meetings that, that I was attending at the Security Council, um, the Syrian ambassador said that there was no crisis taking place in Syria, right? They outrightly just refused that there was even anything happening and they even flashed pictures of beautiful streets and markets of Syria. Um, everybody's going around their business, shopping, et cetera, and that this was a complete international fabrication. So there is a lot of critical objectivity that is required in these meetings. And that's something that you learn at this internship um, also. Now, you know, we've spoken enough about the past and the present. I wanna talk about the future. What are your guys' future goals five to 10 years from now? You've had these incredible experiences sitting at the United Nations at these very, very important meetings that students, you know, at, at that age can only dream about. How has it impacted your life and where do you see yourself going now with all of this experience and information? Janice, I hate it, but I'm going to pick on you again first. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so as a result of my experiences at WIT, I was selected to work at um, KAIST at their, uh, in Korea at their Nuclear Education and Research Center. And that's this past summer. And I think that that's really where I found my passion is in nonproliferation. So I'm writing my thesis on nonproliferation, um, specifically with constructivist theory frameworks. Um, I've gotten really into international relations theory and the way that it practically applies to cases and the way that we can predict and actually translate academia to policy because that is so sorely needed um, mm -hmm. in the international community. 
Um, so going forward, I'm hoping to serve either as a subject matter expert in some sort of consultancy capacity, either in the private sector um, contracting for the government or directly within the government itself, whether that be domestically or internationally. I'm also interested in CTBTO, um, the comprehensive uh, ban on the, the test ban treaty. And um, I'm also um, interested in the IAEA eventually. So that's somewhere where you see yourself, um, you know, working for the yes. International yeah. Energy Agency? Interesting, Janice, because uh, Katerina and Nusrat are going to be having a discussion on the new nuclear energy power plants. Now, you know that uh, uh, nuclear power is uh, built by the governments and solar and wind and fracking is by businesses. So the money uh, is... Uh, basically made by the businesses with when the government builds it is uh, they use the public money but it's for everybody so i think it is very very important that this uh, topic be discussed if we go over to you where do you see yourself five to ten years from now and you know how has the wit internship fueled you to do what you do <laughs> i can answer I can answer the second part of the question of how the WIT um, World Information Transfer has fueled me to go further in life. But you know that I don't like the, uh, I don't like the question of where I see myself in five to 10 years. Um, it's a very difficult question because um, I like to be, I do have, I do have a, a, an idea of what I want to do going forward, but then I do not want to limit myself to anything. Um, I want to keep go, go forward with an open mindset. For instance, uh, I just started my first proper job in consulting and uh, my one of my first projects happens to be in nuclear. Never in my past 25 years of life had I ever imagined that I would actually get into nuclear and really enjoy it. And I did not even think about that. I will be able to draw connections to what I'm doing right now with my very first internship at World Information Transfer. Um, yeah. So anything can happen. But to answer your question, uh, I see myself uh, working in the private sector, primarily consulting uh, for the next five years at least. I would like to gain ex experience and knowledge across various industries because consulting, is th that's what it offers. And then maybe after that, I would be very keen on moving back into the international organizations. Maybe the UN or the World Bank, I will see what to do. But yeah, that's the long-term goal. Incredible. And see he Maybe I'm a little bit different from other interns because I started intern uh, when I'm 32 years old. I already had a lot of experience about work, five years journalist and two years educator and one year as UNESCO. So I don't know, it was really always big challenge to me to do something new. So, but I really wanted to learn something that I never known. So I decided to go to the New York to be intern and the first time in my life. And it was really good experience. Uh, actually, my friend or family uh, was like worried about me. Oh, how you do intern in your age? So, like, how are you gonna start to, to something new now, but yeah, but I don't know. I just wanted to do something. Uh, I really wanted to know, so I started an internship in thirty years old, and uh, it was really. I think it was really impactful in my life, and I think I can extend my eyesight, and I really want to contribute built a, a better world now. So I think it will make another future for me. And 
I really can imagine myself what I'm doing in five, 10 years old, years later, because five years ago, I was a journalist. So I never expect that I become an intern in, the, in New York. I never expect that I'm going to the New York actually in my life. Yeah. It happened. So I think I was just try to make a better world with people. That's just, I can think about it. Marcy, for the fact that you missed out a lot of the uh, extra things in the UN internship, you're really doing a, well, a great job. And you. uh, your work ethic and your dedication are the primary requirements to be successful in life. So I wouldn't worry about your future. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true, Dr. Derbeck. I want to touch on one other theme, and I'm conscious of time, um, and that is the theme of friendship, right? We all come together from different parts of the world in New York for the World Information Transfer Internship at the UN. And, you know, this is the WIT process, it's the methodology, but the way Dr. Derbeck selects the interns, we're all very similar, which we eventually find out. Um, and there's so much that, you know, we can learn from one another. And I have, you know, through my time at World Information Transfer, really made some of the closest friends um, in my life who till date are some of my closest friends um, with the same passion of changing things, working in international development, working for their national governments. You know, they are just fueled like no other individual I have ever met. So I wanna ask you guys from your cohorts, when you remember working with other interns, what are some of the things that you know <laughs> you learned from them and are they are you still in touch? Are you still good friends with them? You know Janice, I'm looking at you. We'll start again. <laughs> um, so I was in a cohort of three students from a high school in Englewood, New Jersey. And uh, one of those students is now studying in nursing school, and the other student, uh, Leticia Murillo, is studying in Fordham um, in international relations, and she's more interested in the grant writing side of uh, nonprofit organizations and international organizations, but she has been such a close friend of mine um, throughout my journey navigating international relations as a career, um, finding internships, kind of commiserating on how difficult it is to find a job in this field, <laughs> um, and also uh, encouraging each other, uplifting each other, and um, also driving each other, motivating each other, and um, showing each other how much dedication and effort it takes to really be successful in this field. Yeah. And Nusrat? Uh, I would definitely um, agree that the internship was also a great opportunity to make friends. And uh, I made some really good friends during my time there and I'm still in touch with them through social media. It's really nice to see them. Um, although I have not had the opportunity to meet them face to face ever since I completed my internship but I'm virtually in touch with them and it's really nice to see them doing great things as of now, six years, yeah, six, seven years later on. Um, so I would definitely, you know, a piece of advice for anyone who is thinking of um, applying for an internship uh, at World Information Transfer. You know, you are here to learn, uh, but also don't forget to have fun, make friends, because as Apoor mentioned, that you will eventually realize that all these other interns, they are in some way or the other similar to you. We are a bunch of like-minded people who are ambitious and have a purpose in life. Yeah. yeah for me, yeah. I was with the two students from Korea. So during the COVID circumstance, I'll be, uh, like lean on each other a lot because uh, we are really feel like uh, this uh, depressed sometimes and like um, we can go anywhere we can go any restaurants uh, 
in this time or something like that. We are in New York, but we can't go anywhere or something like that. But I was really happy to like having them together. So I don't feel really lonely and I can really talk to them and I can really discuss uh, what they think or something like that. I was really happy to uh, be together with them. And I also feel like sometimes you can really meet people who really think like you, the way you thought, think or how you see the words. It's yeah. sometimes people are different, but you can really meet people who really think really similarly, like uh, in a way you think. So it makes me really happy like uh, to meet that kind of people. So I can encourage myself and we, I feel like we are growing up, to, growing together, like something like that. That's incredible. Well, I just want to say I'm very, very glad that uh, the three of you have had an opportunity to come and join and talk about your experiences. And I have one question to all of you. And the question is, what did you find the most difficult uh, situation and in your internship and how you resolved that? So I'll start with you, Nusrat, because you uh, were there in 2014. It was a very difficult year internationally. So I would like to know what you, what's the most difficult situation that you had to resolve during that time. And then of course, Janice, and then finally see you. Um, so for me at that time, um, I, I came to the internship not knowing how to do an internship. So that was in itself a huge challenge for me because the day I joined, um, all the other interns were already into the program, one or two weeks into the program. My visa took a while. So I was I, I joined a bit late and I had to catch up with the rest of them. So that was like one big challenge for me because I not only had to learn what I had to do, but also to catch up with what has been going on so far and how things are done. And um, in order to overcome that challenge, uh, you know, I asked my colleagues and I would ask questions, what to do, where do I go for a meeting? How do I even look at the timetable for the meetings at the UN. I didn't even know those basic things because everybody had started. So I missed on the induction. So it really helped um, when I went around and asked people, I would you know, ask Apoor, I would ask Modu, I would ask the other interns, uh, can you please help me? And they were kind enough to take out five to 10 minutes out of their busy schedule to run me through things. And I also remember uh, the first, um, meeting that I attended, uh, I didn't even know how what was expected in terms of the uh, briefs that we were meant to prepare. So the fellow interns, they were nice enough to sort of help me out and give me advice and proofread it and show me how it is done. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And Janice? Yes. So um, I think some one of the biggest challenges um, at WIT is, I think I've heard mentioned before, you are the youngest people in that building. Um, and it's something that's very intimidating at first. And I had to learn how to comport myself in a manner that was really emphasized by Modu and Dr. Strauss and by Dr. Durbeck. I remember Dr. Durbeck, you were telling us and pointing out different young people in the United Nations building, how they were dressing and how they were walking and how they were speaking to other people. And this really helps me when we ran into a problem at um, the conference where we had a lot of people who were showing up and their IDs weren't um, matching up with their tickets or their um, verification had to be re-verified um, at the security office. And in that moment, even though I know that my face looks very young and I, I'm very hyper aware of my age, I could not be uh, distracted by that insecurity and I could not limit myself and allow the other person to limit me into my age and my um, 
perceived authority. So what I did was I said, okay, I understand that I'm this age and my face looks young, but I also understand that um, I'm here to learn and I have the authority of someone who's working in service of this audience. So I went and I resolved the issue by going to the security office and, and standing outside and basically acting in a role of service. So I didn't feel so uncomfortable with my age, but at the same time, I didn't feel unconfident. That's excellent. That's a very, very important learning lesson. Thank you. And see. For me personally, I'm really like introvert person. So it was really hard to participate in some meetings. They discuss together and sometimes they played game together. There's every kind of meeting was really challenging for me because I was really shy. I don't really want to talk to people, but they asked me so many questions and need to say some my thoughts about the themes. So yeah, you miss out on that, unfortunately. That would have been very, very helpful for you. So, uh, ladies, it was a pleasure listening to you. I wish you the best of luck. You know you can always get in touch with me if you want. And uh, I am going to pass the baton over to Kabir to close the meeting and announce our next sessions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Durbag. Janice Nusrat Sihi, it's been an absolute pleasure having you join us for a session of World Information Transfers Virtual Voices series. To everyone joining from around the world, we have a very, very charged agenda forward. On the 4th of November, next Wednesday, we have Dr. Ruth Etzel and Dr. Sophie Bulk talk about their book about protecting your child's health, um, expert awareness to urgent environmental challenges. The week after that, on the 11th of November, we have uh, Ron Bruner, who is the chairman of education for employment on the 18th of November, the Wednesday after that, we have Miss Amil Najar joining us, who is the founder of Children of War Foundation. So as you can see, we have a packed schedule and we hope to see everyone there. This has been, of course, an absolute passion project, uh, getting all of us interns together, um, and if there's one thing I'd leave you with, I'd leave you with a quote um, by Steve Jobs that used to hang in my apartment in New York when I was an intern in 2014. And it said, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. They're not, they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify them or vilify them. But the only thing that you cannot do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as crazy ones, we see genius. Dr. Durbach sees genius because the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are generally the ones who do. Thanks everyone for joining us for another session of World Information Transfers Virtual Voices series. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.